Hey everybody, it's Mr. Bureau from Staten Island Tech, and today I'm going to be doing a demo for the home renovation project for Revit. What you're looking at right now is the one floor home that's given to you um, for renovation. Uh, if I look at the top down view of this particular home, we could see uh, a very large living area where the front entrance of the home goes straight back to the rear exit. Um, which would be a sliding door to a potential backyard. Exiting this particular living area is uh, a very small, tight kitchen with no floor at the moment. There's only one floor present in the house, which is this particular one that goes across these pieces. This small hallway leads to two identical bedrooms that have sliding door closets. And there's one bathroom present that's also um, has access from the hallway. The bathroom has a tub toilet and sink. And then there's another room right off of the bathroom that either could be called a pantry or a room for like laundry, such as like a, a washing machine and dryer. That's all that's present in the home right now, except for some ceilings and the ceilings. If you want to take a look at them, you just flick to the other 3D view and you can have it here. Level one floor plan shows pretty much the same thing. I do want to bring your attention though to these reference planes. The reference planes are there to show where the existing walls were. So do not move the reference planes and also take notice of the fact that this view is being cropped. So if I take a look at the crop region by clicking this button, I could see that I could move it out if I want to expand that wall or expand this wall. I'm gonna have to increase that crop region or just turn off view cropping in its entirety. So you can do that if you want. Um, let's get to the meat of the program. This is Bob Vila. The project is named after him. If you take a look at the requirements for the project, let's go to the top. It's called the Vila Home Re Renovation. That's not Villa, it's Vila, named after Bob Vila. You're gonna be renovating this house. Um, there's a note over here for you to take notice that there are ceilings in place and those reference planes are there again to mark the existing walls. First modification is the kitchen. You are to expand the size of the kitchen so it can be known as an eat-in kitchen. That means there should be a table or a countertop with some chairs placed where a person can have their family have a meal inside the kitchen. You're not allowed to move the sink, stove, or refrigerator. So here's the kitchen. Uh, there are some walls over here, which can be, of course, modified. Those are just interior walls. But the location of the countertop, sink, and all of the other appliances in there are not to be moved. So that's renovation part number one. Number two, there should, there should be a master bedroom. The master bedroom should have a full bathroom associated with it, which means a person will be able to go in and use the toilet, a sink, or a shower, or a tub. So a shower or a tub to make it a full bath and a walk-in closet. Walk-in closet is a closet of any size that a person could stand in while they're picking out their clothing. So that master bedroom must be installed somewhere. One of these bedrooms can be converted to a master bedroom. Right now, there's no specification here as to which bedroom serves which person in the family, but currently it's just a room with a sliding door closet that is not large enough to be walked into. Next, which is a related requirement, there should be a total of three bedrooms. Bedroom A should accommodate one child and bedroom B should be able to accommodate two children. Now I'm going to suggest using a bunk bed here, but that's not um, a requirement. As part of that also, there should be a Jack and Jill bathroom. For those of you that don't know, a Jack and Jill bathroom is a bathroom that is shared by both bedrooms. So potentially having two doors to enter the same bathroom and the features of the bathroom will be the features of a normal bathroom, a sink, a tub or shower, and of course a toilet. You can put two sinks if you wish, but that is not required. But the main point is that that bathroom is going to be shared by both children's bedrooms. This is not counting the bathroom that is on the master bedroom. And remember, if you have a guest in your house, they shouldn't have to walk into a bedroom to use a bathroom. So there should be at least a half bath for a guest bed bathroom, or perhaps the Jack and Jill bathroom could be accessed also by a hallway. So that's the really the, the meat of all of the renovations. 
Note that the bathrooms should like kind of share a wet wall. If you take a look at the original design, this wall here for this particular portion, I guess like right there and also right here for this back wall, these would be considered walls that have pipes in them. So if you want to put a bathroom over here, that would be okay. Uh, and then as far as like this bathroom, of course, we would consider also this part of the wall here and this part of the wall here as wet walls. So you could put a new bathroom here or split this existing bathroom. That's okay. You could renovate the bathrooms as much as you like, but just try your best to have bathrooms share a wall um, for the purpose of making pipe design and things like that a lot easier. As far as putting the fixtures on those walls, it's not that big of a deal, but uh, that would be the ideal situation where all the, the fixtures that require water should share a wall. But again, you're gonna do your best to make that happen. This is the first project also that requires the use of sheets and views. So you're gonna create a sheet for your floor plan. Um, that sheet will be showing all of the kitchen appliances, tables, chairs, all the bathroom fixtures, the furniture. Um, you can explore other components you really should have the normal furniture that would be present in a room, like a couch in a living room or a coffee table, or perhaps a TV stand or something like that. The bedroom, if it doesn't have a closet, should have a dresser to hold clothing. But most of the bedrooms that you're going to have are going to be able to have closets. So that'd be great. And then that would make um, the dressers and things like that not as necessary. But try to furnish the house as if a person would be living in it. Dimensioning is also going to be a sheet. You're, you are to dimension everything that gets renovated. So if a part of the house is not being touched, there's no reason to put dimensions on it. So any part of it that gets renovated should be dimensioned. And I'll bring your attention back to these, these reference planes. If you're going to move this wall from here to there, then you're going to dimension from the reference plane to the new location of the wall to show the type of renovation that was made. I do want to say that you will be allowed to modify the exterior walls um, a little bit where one or two of them can be moved. I, I wrote that over here. It says you may move part or all of up to two exterior walls. That's an important note to take advantage of. If you're going to move more than two walls, you're pretty much demolishing the house and rebuilding it. So that is not allowed. Only up to two exterior walls, partially or in total, can be actually moved. And make sure you have a good reason for that, of course. Uh, the dimension uh, area does not have to be shown. So you don't need to show an area plan, but you're going to mention the, the square footage of the home inside the design notes of the dimension sheet. If you need more than one dimension sheet, you can. Or if you need more than one view for dimensions, you could put up to two views on one sheet. I'm going to want another sheet to show a 3D view. The type of 3D view I'm looking for is going to be something like this, like from a perspective over here, where I can see the home partially inside, partially outside, sort of like an angled perspective. That would be considered a good 3D view for a sheet. And as you could see, I'd like you to show it with a roof and then one without a roof or ceiling. So this would be the no roof, no ceiling view, and the other view would be one with a ceiling. And you're gonna split that sheet into two halves, one view on one side and one view on the other. That's a single sheet. And then sheet D would be a camera view sheet. You will be splitting that sheet into quadrants on the paper and then placing four camera locations. You're gonna learn how to use the camera command for this particular project. So. Place the cameras wisely. You're gonna to wanna to show off the major renovations for your project using the cameras. So make sure you utilize them properly. Use colored views. You could experiment with rendering if you'd like, but have those cameras demonstrating what your renovation really shines with. Um, for this project, there's gonna be an advanced option. The advanced option would allow you to experiment with a second level, whether you put that above the first floor or below the first floor as a basement, you can put a partial second level in. I'll let you explore that um, on your own, but basically 
Uh, if you do that option, you are not allowed to move the exterior walls of the original home, uh, but instead go ahead and add a second level either above or below this specified area, which would be um, inside the document, this area right here, either above or below that particular area, you could put a second floor, so as a basement or a second level of the home, and you can go ahead and use that space as well as modifying the original part of the first floor, anything that you could modify to make all the accommodations that were required uh, as laid out in sections one, two, and three of the project. Make sure you understand that if you're gonna go down that path, you're responsible for handling the usage of stairs as well as managing the level properly. So that's about it. I'm not gonna talk too much uh, about what should happen, uh, but make sure like that you're making modifications that are worth it. This is a living room area. It doesn't have to stay as a living room area. Anything that's an interior wall is not necessarily needs to be kept where it is. Again, the only thing that is not allowed to be moved is this kitchen and the rest of the, the parts in here should be considered movable, except for the bathroom. The bathroom itself should kind of stay in the same location, but it can be split, meaning like the, the location of the water should be the same, but the fixtures can be taken out and moved to a different wall or, or something like that, or, or the interior walls can be modified heavily if you'd like to. That's the renovation project. Uh, it allows a lot of customization. I wanna see the floors. I wanna see ceilings. I wanna see a roof. I wanna see components in there. That's a very, very, very important thing. And uh, you should be creative in the way you use the space. It doesn't have to be so, so, so traditional. And think always that you're trying to satisfy uh, a customer that's requiring this renovation. That should be it. Um, perhaps I'm gonna be adding another video after this to show you some examples of the second floor or basement. But for now, good luck and thank you very much. Hey, I'm back. I just wanted to show two examples of the advanced option. I'll bring it back over here and I just wanna say I'm talking about this. The advanced option would be instead of modifying the exterior walls, but be just including a second floor above the living room, kitchen, bathroom area, or below the living room, kitchen area as a basement. So that is an advanced option. It is very difficult because you don't really have experience with stairs or levels, and that that would be a natural problem for you. So it's going to require you to experience that um, kind of fresh the first time, and you will not be provided extra time to do that. So going back to the original uh, Revit file, I could show you again, like on level one, we're talking about this area right here uh, that would, that you would have either above or below. And then here's an example of the building with a second floor above in a loft style. It would not have to be loft style, of course. But as you can see, the exterior walls were extended to cover that particular part of the house. And then this particular wall over here would have to be changed to be an exterior wall, at least above for the second floor. Because as you can see, windows were added there. And I did not include increasing the size of this exterior wall or this exterior wall over here because I wanted to show how the loft would kind of be installed inside this hole. So above the living area, above the kitchen, you would have this open area here as a second floor. You could do the same thing with this entire part enclosed and split into three rooms or two rooms if you want as that second floor. And don't forget, right above this bathroom here, you could put another bathroom and that would be fine because it uses the same wet wall. Here's another example of that as a basement. Um, pretty empty space over there, but that can easily be divided into rooms. And I just wanted to show you that the entrance to the basement actually put inside the former laundry room area. And if I click on those walls, it could show some transparency. So a person walks in this door and goes right down the flight of steps into the new cellar or basement area. And again, exterior walls would have to be changed and, and all that stuff, and that was left out of here to show the functional part of that home. So this would still appear to be a, a one floor home from above, but there would be this additional basement area included. Not very realistic for a renovation, but 
Perhaps the basement was always there and it was just never really used as a living space. The intention here would be to use this basement as a living space. And again, just as before, if I wanted to take this bathroom area here and replicate part of it downstairs, that would be fine. Okay, so those are the two options or ideas for the options that you have for creating that advanced option of the, the project or advanced um, pathway for completing the renovation. Remember, if you go down that path, you're not to modify the existing exterior walls as far as their placement for space. That's about it. And again, good luck and thank you very much.